Okay, we've done the eye. I think it's time to move on to the nose. Uh, we're gonna put it all together, don't worry. Uh, I'm gonna have to fast forward through this. Uh, let's go uh, to the nose. All right, uh, I'm gonna pause this long enough to uh, erase all this crap and go straight to the nose. Okay, I'm back. I, it took me longer than I thought because I was trying to erase things that were just actually part of my dirty screen on my computer, uh, which will not erase with the uh, with the software for some reason. All right, we're gonna go into noses, and for noses, I pretty much need a head. So uh, I'm gonna give uh, the three basic head positions. Uh, that you'll see the nose in, uh, well, remember our head's just a circle and a square. Uh, we'll go to straight on head. You actually cut off a lot of the circle on the straight on head. Right where they go. All right. And then we will put the sideways head. Just circle in a square. Remember how rough I do these. And then we got the dreaded three quarters head. And this one, this one's awful. This one's awful. I should have put it up higher because it's gonna, it's gonna give me problems. Which is not a square but a cube. You got to remember three dimensions. When it's a three quarters, when it's straight at you, you don't notice it. When it's a three quarters, you notice it. Uh, so these are actually all spheres and cubes and not just circles and squares. I said circles and squares just because it was easier. All right, let's get rid of these guidelines. Okay, we'll put in just some quickie eyeballs. Uh, believe it or not, I find it's easier to line the eyeballs up if you go ahead and draw them as spears first, and then cut them out. Because for some reason it's easier to align the spears than it is to align the... Uh... You can't do that in profile. I guess you could. I guess you could. You do it like that. Draw the spheres and then draw the skin around them. And then in this case, let's get rid of those guidelines. Draw the spheres. And then draw that guideline, I mean, draw the eye lids. Okay. So the nose really starts differently on different people, which is why it's going to be difficult to, 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 to give a tutorial on. Uh, some people's noses start right at their brow, right up here. Let's, uh, let's just put a little brow knot on, on everybody. Uh, see, your brow knot would be there. Uh, usually there's a dip here. Usually it go, the brow goes in and then back out. You won't see that from the front perspective except for with your shading, unless he has a severe dip. And then people's noses are different based on all kinds of things. Some people's noses are just pretty much straight little uh, cone cylinders with uh, with uh, uh, some nostrils on either side that are pointing down and you can't see the holes. Uh, some people's noses have a happy little ball on the end like, like, like our friend over here. He's got a little ball on the end of his nose. Uh, 
Uh, so you want to you want to draw a little ball on the end of their nose. Uh, it's one of my favorite ones to do. And he can either have nostrils pointing down or pointing up. Uh, and also the perspective, of course, is going to determine whether or not you see the nostrils. But you also got you also got the pig noses, where they got the uh, ball pointing up a lot more. And you can you can see their nostrils better. Draw the nostrils in so we don't give people nightmares. See, the noses can come in so many different shapes and sizes, and there's always a philtrum under it. This is a philtrum, by the way, if you didn't know. It's that divot under the nose. Uh, well, it's not always there. You don't always have to draw it in, but you always have to remember it when you're shading, because noses are, are big cast shadow magnets. Uh, unless you're... Uh, unless your light source is from underneath. Even then, they're going to cast a shadow above. Now, what most early artists miss is that there is some connecting flesh. You see the, uh, the cheekbone, as it comes across, kind of connects to the side of the nose way down on it. And this is what creates the little part of the face I like to call the monkey face. This is the monkey monkey part of the face. It's where the lips are. See, I drew it in in its entirety when all I needed was depth lines. But this that part of the face sticks out. So from profile, let's let's not use that nose because it creeps me out. Let's use a normal nose. From profile. You will see just a hint of a line here because it's it's not very deep, but you will see more of the monkey face, which is the part the part of the mouth that sticks out. And especially if they're expressing something, their mouth is open. Let's just draw a quick mouth, quick angry mouth. Their mouth is open, and Nostrils all flared, angry because I'm playing guitar again. Uh, you're going to see that line a lot starker because the because it's stretched, and when it's taut, it kind of creates more of a depression. Uh, and you're going to see the backside of the cheekbone more when they're angry, and maybe even a couple other stress lines in between. That's drawing some angry teeth. Angry teeth. Arr, arr. I guess me growling doesn't 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 make it. I'm in an odd mood tonight, guys. I'm so tired. I apologize. Uh but uh this was about noses and I, the only part of that I didn't draw was the nose. Okay. But uh yeah, yeah, you'll see it a lot more if they're expressing themselves. And you'll usually get a wrinkle right here as the brow comes down. The, the brow muscles there will come down in their, in, in, in their fury. And the eyes will slant more inward than outward. See, uh, I'll go over expressions later. But, you get the picture there. Draw the bottom part of the monkey part of the face. I don't know why I call it the monkey part of the face, mainly because if you if you draw it in like this, it looks like a monkey. See? Just add some some fur texture. It looks kinda like a monkey. Uh but yeah, that's that's there's a there's a, there's a part of the face that connects to the nose right around here, right around this area, right around this area uh, that uh, is ignored a lot. That's where the cheekbone is coming across, and it's upraised 
and the nose is upraised, and that's kind of where they meet. Uh, I don't know if this is too clear, but we'll do the three quarters, the dreaded three quarters nose, where depending on the type of nose, you may be able to see the other nostril, you may not be, and depending on the angle and all that other stuff, you may not be. Uh, sometimes you can see the you, you can you can see the inner line there. Uh, more than the cheekbone because the cheekbone's actually back behind and that's up in front and you know things in front always get a little darker detail and we'll draw his monkey part of the face see how it's much 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 less upraised in a three-quarters position give him a chin And the ears, like I said before, usually fall behind the jaw. I was in my first tutorial I drew it at the top of the jaw, but they're kind of in line with the eyes when you think about it. Because if he had glasses on, they'd be resting right on his ears. Those are awful glasses and he needs to go back to the optometrist. But uh so we're, we're we're still working on faces. Uh, noses come in so many different shapes and sizes. The general consensus is is that they are, for the most part, their basic shape is this. That's the bridge. That's the main part of the nose, right here. Uh, that's a that's the main part of the nose is the bridge and it, and it's usually shaped like this like I said it could be more rounded on top it could be uh, you know a bigger dip at the top it could be uh, hooked it could have a it could swell in the middle uh, there's so many variations but the basic shape is like this and remember, it's the you start with the basic shape and then you modify it. And the bulb of the nose, everybody's got a bulb of the nose. Some people's are just little protrusions that stick down. Some people's you barely even notice the bulb of their nose. Some people have very flat noses. Uh, and the nostrils, usually I try to draw the nostril holes first. Depending on uh, depending on the character, and if they're pointed upwards, of course whatever is in front is going to leave a depth line. But if they're going downwards, or is that eraser? Is that dirt on my screen? Yeah, it's just dirt on my screen. Okay. If if the nostrils are going downwards, they'll just be they'll just be little little half cones under the bulb, which I like a big round bulb as as the tip of the nose. So that's the basic shape of the nose. All other variants are going to be up to the character you're drawing. Of course, you want to. You want to make your characters distinctive. You want to make them stand out. You want to, so you always want to give them at least one feature that's going to be recognizable. Uh, in this case, the nose is uh, well. That's about the squarish nose I've ever seen. So you'd want to make those only only depth lines, not not full lines. You, you, you never you never want full lines inside a shape unless they're completely obscuring the object behind them. Like for instance the filter from underneath this nose is obscured by the the base of the nose so therefore I did a full line and this part of the skin is fully obscured. But the sides of the nose are not fully obscured. So you only want to hint at them. 
more so where there's shadow. Like the light source is the same as we've always been giving it. The shadow over here, the cast shadow, is going to have a more defined depth line than the line over here, as will the connecting monkey divider line. You can tell I went to art school because I have such technical terms. I am actually self-taught. I used to be a terrible artist. Uh, I, I had art class in high school. Uh, the bulb, of course, is rounded. And uh, we did this. and But I never won any prizes. We had some amazing artists in my classes. And I was always discouraged because I was like the worst artist in class. And so I tried really hard. And I learned. Uh, I learned to break things down into basic shapes. Comic books helped. In case you're wondering why my art looks so much like comic book art. Because uh, I use their... Uh, they use a wide variety of pretty extreme expressions. Which helps with the expressions. And they used a wide variety of localities and uh, imagery. You can you can look at a lot of comic books and see uh, and see features you won't normally see uh, uh, in any other set of image resources. Like they could be at an ocean one minute and then fly across the world and be in the mountains. And you get the basic ideas of what you want to draw. I mean of, of of how to draw them from that, but, but comic books use a lot of cheats, especially on legs and feet. Let me tell you, a lot of comic, comic book artists are so lazy on feet, which is why probably today I am terrible at drawing feet, because I learned so much from comic books. But I also learned from my mom's anatomy book, she's an RN. Uh, so I looked through her anatomy books to learn the placements of the muscles because, you know, muscles are only, when, you, when you're drawing an arm, you know, muscles are only mostly guidelines unless everybody's super flexed. Uh, so basically most of the time you don't get the full shape. You just, you just, you just get the, uh, the guidelines, the depth lines of, of the muscles in a comic book. Uh, so to actually learn the shapes of the muscles, I looked at my mom's anatomy book. But I will be sharing the shapes of the muscles with you. I shared some in the first tutorial. And this isn't about muscles. This is about faces. And uh, I think we've covered the nose pretty well. And the philtrum and the monkey part. I think we even covered the cheekbones pretty well. Just remember there's a skull under there. And that makes the cheekbones pretty hard to forget, you know, because the skulls have the prominent cheekbones. Skulls. Skulls. Hey, you guys ever heard that song? Uh, But uh, anyway, there's a skull in there. I'm probably just going to erase that. In case, if you guys see erased to make sure I don't infringe on copyright, that's what that's all about. That's, that's what that's all about. I, I have now turned my monkey into a skull. Uh, let's, let's give him the little lines underneath. Uh, but the skull helps a lot. Because you can see that basically a human head is a is a skull with skin wrapped over it and some cartilage in the in the case of the bone. Uh, I mean, in case of the nose. So we've covered eyes, we've covered uh, nose, we've covered philtrum, we've covered monkey part. Uh, Filtrum is actually the, the real... Oh, we didn't put a Filtrum on the three-quarter perspective guy. What a lazy person I am. Uh, 
but uh, these are the these are the primary perspectives you're going to be using in in most art. Uh, I mean, of course, behind the head, but you wouldn't see any of the facial features behind the head, so there's no point in doing a facial uh, a facial uh, uh, video from behind. Of course, there was also no point in drawing a shoulder and a bicep and a tricep right there. But my mind's wandering a bit. And uh, I'm going to pause the video again, erase. We're going to do lips, chin, and putting it all together right next.